let's have a conversation. The American economy got exposed. I'm about to give you some predictions of what I think is going to happen in the second reset based upon a little research that I got. So sit back, hold tight, and also, if, if this is your first time here, go to Hustlers Kung Fu Life Skills and get my free course, 30 Days to $2,500. This course will teach you how to set up a side business and start making some money. And there's a few other helpful things below this video. This is one of the most strangest times in American history. Look at the stock market. The stock market is pumping. And one of the reasons the stock market is pumping that it is being artificially held up and propped up by the Fed. And this is what I think is going to happen because the American economy got exposed. When you dive into the data, you will see things were not as good as they were put to you. We had a record stock market. We had low unemployment. One of the reasons we had low unemployment is due to all of these gig economy workers. They were classified as employees in the data, even though they weren't classified as employees by their companies. Right now, it is super, super strange. We have 33 million people unemployed. Many of these folks cannot even get into the Department of Labor to collect their unemployment benefits. And the stock market's pumping and the stock market keeps going up. Every time there's all of this bad news, there's a rise in the stock market. And I'm going to tell you why. The Fed is pumping it up. Trump wants the stock market to be strong. Trump needs the stock market to be strong. Because if the stock market crashes, which it will, and I'm going to explain to you why I feel that the stock market is going to crash and crash really hard, is you're being fed a narrative that is fake. Because I want you to revisit America in 1950. And I want you to revisit Detroit, which was the second largest economy in the world at the time behind America. You could literally, my Uncle Martin left Alabama, moved to Detroit, start working for GM, and that's where he stayed for 35 years and he retired and he got a pension. He was able, he didn't even graduate high school. He was able to go up to Detroit, work in the factory, make enough money to buy a house. He met my Aunt Lillian, they got married, they raised four kids, and he was able to do this. That's when America was really, really strong. That's when there was opportunity literally in every street. We'll move forward about 25 years to the 70s when we started offshoring our manufacturing. And this eliminated, there was VPs of companies who literally started off in the mail room and they were able to go from the mail room to the C-suite through hard effort, determination and grit. Those opportunities are so rare today. When I was a kid, I went and knocked on the door of this company called Sign Builders and I asked for a job and the lady said they didn't have no job. The owner of the company was driving by, he saw me walking and he came back, picked me up in his Corvette, took me back and they created a position. He says, a man who wants to work, we're gonna create opportunity. That's when America was great. Right now, we have a lot of opportunists, we have uh, situations, and also we have false narratives. Let me explain to you, while I feel that the stock market is gonna crash again, and I feel that we're going to have a second set of lockdowns. I've been investigating what has happened in China, in South Korea, in Italy, and all of these places that have lifted their restrictions are having a second wave of infections and they're relocking down their economies. That's going to happen here. And right now, the Fed is literally putting their foot on the gas of the economy. They're giving everything they've got. They're deploying every trick. We're probably going to have negative interest rates next year. They're doing everything they can. They're literally throwing the kitchen sink at the economy. And they're going to be out of bullets real soon. 
And then when we have this second wave of infections, the second wave of lockdowns, the markets, the marketplace fundamentals are going to kick in. And then the Fed's going to be in a very tough situation because the Fed just borrowed $3.3 trillion and stacked this on top of the $3.3 trillion for the Stimulus Act. We're at $6.6 trillion that was stacked on the national deficit in a matter of weeks. How deep are they going to go? And also, we're going to run the, the problem of where our national debt will eclipse our GDP. Make no mistake about it. Our GDP is going to be down this year because companies are closed, restaurants are closed, factories are closed, people are not working, 3.3 million people unemployed. Our GDP is going to be down and we're already, we're close because our national debt was like 20 trillion and our GDP was 22 trillion. And as long as our GDP was higher than our national debt, we could play that game. But if we run into a situation where let's say at the end of the year, our national debt is 32 trillion and then our GDP is 18 or 17 trillion. We start running into a lot of problems. We start running into stagflation. We run into a government that could be literally crippled from providing additional stimulus in the future. And at this point, this is where the rubber meets the road. What's going to happen is going to happen. Right now, everything is being delayed because the Fed is propping up the stock market, not propping up the economy. Jerome Powell has gone out and said, hey, don't let this fact that we have this large deficit dissuade you from providing stimulus to the American people. And we're going to have to face the piper at some point. Hopefully, I am wrong. Hopefully, we don't have a second wave of infections. But I look at this map every day and I see the infections are growing and we don't have massive infections like we have up in the New England, New York area. That's not happened yet. And all this talks and also go ahead to there is a type of light that kills viruses and it's not sunlight. It's ultraviolet light, which is dangerous to humans. So the light that we need to kill this thing, because it's been proven that they have these little robots that roam around these hospitals and they flash these lights and they disinfect these rooms. But people cannot be in the rooms with these robots when they're disinfecting the room. So light can kill this thing, but the same light will also harm us. So this whole notion that sunlight's going to cleanse it, sunlight's going to kill it. No, do your research. It's ultraviolet light. And I feel that this is going to be with us for a while. Unfortunately, it's very, very sad. I think this is going to become the new normal. And like the airline industry is looking at five years to bounce back to where they were in January. We're looking at many industries. The oil industry has been crippled. The airline industries have been crippled. Manufacturing has been crippled. And now we have this global reset with China, the American, the United States of America, and Japan. Those are the three top economies in the world. And they're all resetting. You're going to see some strange things happen in the future. You're going to see, because with this global reset, those who have cash, those who have practiced sound money practices, who have cash in the bank are going to be able to become richer because I gave you the bad news. Now, let me give you the good news. If you are in proximity of being a person who can come up, because like I said, I feel that if we have a second round of infections, we will not have an NFL season. We will not have a college football season. And this will be more trillions of dollars of economic activity gone. We cannot keep going in the tank. Once again, I hope that I'm wrong. I love myself some college football. I love myself some good NFL games. But the reality is, if this thing stays around and becomes a persistent killer or persistent problem in the economy, this thing could be around for years. Let me, let me say this again. It could be around for years. 
where we're going to be living this new normal. And right now we have people who are debating is wearing a mask good thing or not wearing the mask. And all of the countries who are winning against this thing, they wear a mask. It's a funny thing because in America, we have a unique spirit that has made this the wealthiest country in the world. And also that same spirit is something that can create a little damage and a little harm. It is unique because like I've been on the fence because we needed to shut down. This thing was dangerous, but the reality is the economic harm that this thing is causing is harming even more people than the disease is killing. And it's a very tough calculation. I wouldn't want to be in Trump's shoes because any president would be faced with a very hard decision. And Trump just doubled down and it's like, let's open this thing up, let's open this thing up. The GOP, let's open it up, let's open it up. If people die, damn it, they die. Because what we have going on is going to be economically worse. Suicide rates are going to skyrocket. Domestic abuse has skyrocketed. Alcohol sales have skyrocketed. People are smoking like chimneys because people are stressed. And also, hopefully I am wrong because if we have a second wave of lockdowns, unemployment could literally get to 50%. Let me say that again. Unemployment could literally get to 50%. And we're talking about a decade, 10 years or more for our economy to get back to where we were in January, if these things happen. And I see a combination of some of these things happening because the stock market is, is doing double monkey backflips, it's balling out of control and people are putting money. Because see, at some point, you gotta understand the velocity of money. At some point, these 33 million people who are laid off and, and counting, because more people are being laid off, they, they're not gonna have money. And this is a very interesting fact. Recently, the American savings rate reaches the highest savings rate that we've had since 1981, which means that people are scared, they're holding on to their money, they're not spending, they're not buying anything, and that right there is dangerous for a consumption-based economy. When people start holding on to their money, they're not buying cars, they're, they're sitting on their cash, they're going to the bank, they're taking their cash out, and this, this, this wicked recipe of disaster and chaos. Because there are many people who feel that we're going to have this V-shaped recovery. I'm here to tell you, it ain't going to happen. It's just not going to happen. Uh, I, that's hope, that's fancy, that's uh, people being up in their feelings, that's pure optimism. When you look at the reality, because every day I look at the map, I look, you know, when I go out and about, because I got to run errands, I look at what's going on out here in the streets. And I live in a wealthy neighborhood. Economic activity is down in a wealthy neighborhood. I can only imagine what's going on across town on the south side. I can only imagine how many single mothers are catching hell right now. I can only imagine how many people who are in the lower income strata are catching hell right now. Because right now, things are just kind of slowed down around here. Everyone's home. These folks are still having parties, pool parties. You know, they're doing what they're doing. But they were so far ahead of the economic curve. And if you were on the lower echelons of the economic ladder, this pandemic is chaos. Because one of the things I've been doing, watching the stimulus check videos, because they're, they're starting to trend down, because a lot of people who are making stimulus check videos, they're starting to lose some velocity. And then there are some other ones who just recently started, they're gaining velocity, it's really strange. But they're starting to tell the truth that this is just a proposal, this ain't no law, they haven't drafted a bill, they ain't voted on nothing, they're still dickering about the details. And I'm here to tell you, the first stimulus package got hammered out in three weeks, three weeks, and people still haven't got their checks. And right now, <clears throat> one of the things that I started to do is read the comments of the people, and people are hurting. People are in a bad situation. People are, and you're gonna start seeing these people this one dude, he made a video. 
He's in the state of Michigan. He's talking about the, Mi the Michigan Department of Labor is a joke. He's been out of work six weeks. He can't get benefits. He can't get in. And you're going to start seeing more videos like that. This is a recession. And many people keep saying, well, you know, we want to avoid a recession. Make no doubt about it. We've had, we're going to have two consecutive quarters of downward growth, potentially four, because there's this hopeful optimism that we're going to take off in Q4. I don't really see it because there's another thing that's going to happen that no one's talking about. All of these businesses that have shut down that are going to go out of business. That's why unemployment is going to remain high. A lot of businesses that shut down are not going to reopen because they're going to need literally start up capital to reopen. This would be your restaurants. This would be your small grocery stores. This would be heavily capital intensive businesses that when, because as long as they were able to open and make money and keep that money circulating and paying bills, paying employees, they were good. This stoppage is to kiss a death. It literally will kill. Because I'm sitting here to think, if I was in the storage auction business, how would this have impacted me? Because I, I played that little scenario last night and I, I was thinking, well, we were selling on eBay and Amazon and I, I honestly know that I don't know what would happen with our walk-in traffic. I don't know what would have happened with our Craigslist sales which were a very important part of business because I'm not a reseller right now. I don't know what's going on in that world. And I'm also wondering what would have happened because I was wondering, because you know, part of it is if everything shut down, they wouldn't have had auctions. So my supply chain would have been interrupted. So I could have ran, I, I just, you know, put these scenarios in my head and I'm just sitting there like, what would have happened? And I'm just sitting here and I'm thinking about all of the people who are in harm's way, all of the people who don't have a savings account, all of the people who don't have any money, all of the people who don't have a rich uncle G, all of the people, cause I had a, a family member reach out to me and was interested. And it was a very sad story. Now I gave him a little money. And, you know, right now it is crazy. It is so crazy. And you have this group of people because on my Facebook, if you're one of my Facebook friends, you know, I've always posted about stuff. I was accused of posting nothing but racist posts. And out of because I actually counted out of 400 posts, I had one post that kind of touched on racist and that was considered many. And I just left the conversation alone because people are in their feelings. People are using any excuse to display their racism using because this dude's a racist. He doesn't know it. He's a benign racist. He doesn't feel like, you know, he may even have a few black friends, but he's a racist because he saw one post and he deducted that I was always talking about racism. It was kind of like those sitcoms back in the day when they had three or four black characters. They were considered a black show because there was three or four white characters or three or four black characters. Just a strange, strange thing. But right now we, we, we have so much that's going on. And even with the reopening of the economy, it's going to be choppy. It's going to be slow. It's going to be problematic. And it all goes back to money. And you know, it, it is a strange stuff because America got exposed because if our economy was as strong as it was claimed to be, we wouldn't have fell so fast, so quick. Literally, you've got millions of people who absolutely have no money or on unemployment. And there's a small percentage of people who are making more money on unemployment, but there's a lot of people who can't even get unemployment. I want you to think about that. You just got let go from your job. You don't have no money. You got a wife, you got a kid, and you cannot provide for your family. That is a damning position to be in. Cause like I said, I started, cause you know, these stimulus check videos, they really took off and I made a personal calculation that I was gonna avoid that. And I'm still gonna avoid it. I'm not gonna talk about it. I'm gonna continue to do what I'm doing. And I just started to, the comments will make you cry. These people are in a world of hurt. 
they're out here suffering. So I understand why people kind of push back on my videos where I say, I don't think there will be a second stimulus check. And even with all of this economic carnage, look at what's going on. Trump doesn't want to cut another check and the GOP doesn't want to cut another check. And they're going to pull, they're going to delay this as long as they can. If they can pull it off, if the economy shows a little signs of life and things like, I feel that if there's a second round of infections, they will have no choice but to cut a second stimulus check. But until and if that happens, I think they're going to hold off as long as they can. They're not going to make any decisions because they don't want to, because I'm telling you, there are people who are really looking at the national debt and they're looking at the GDP and our GDP has been compromised. Our GDP has shrunk, and it, this could be a very bad, bad year for America because if we get 30 trillion on the balance sheet and our GDP goes down to 15 to 17 trillion, we're going to be in a world of problems. So I want you, because let's talk about solutions because we, we've, we talked about all of the darkness and everything right now. I want you to go ahead and get my course 30 days to 2,500. I want you to get the hustler mindset course. And if you're in a position, cause I understand there's a lot of people who are not in a position. I want you to get the money management course because right now this has exposed America's bad money habits. And this has exposed America's addiction to the American credit indoctrination system. And we got to make some changes as a country. People have got to start saving money. And if you're one of the people in the lower economic income strata, you got to make more money. I know you want to chill out on the weekends and play your video games and go to your parties, but put yourself in a better economic situation before you go out and start playing and partying around. Take care of home first. Make sure that you're, because right now <clears throat> you're getting a reprieve on your mortgage. You're getting a reprieve on your credit cards. You're getting a reprieve on your car note. That's only temporary. At some point, all of the nasty consequences of having debt are going to come home to roost like some wicked chickens. They're going to be coming home and roosting and just driving you crazy. We're going to see all time high bankruptcy filings. Because see, as we transition through this, we're going to see foreclosures. I think the real estate market is going to take a big, big hit, especially if we have a second wave of infections. How home prices are dropping. I've seen a lot of people pull their homes off the market and they're trying to rent them. And that's going to be interesting because real estate is going to have real estate, commercial real estate is already in the toilet. Commercial real estate is is having a depression because all of these businesses that are occupying these commercial spaces, they're not making any money. They cannot pay their rent. So commercial real estate is taking it inside the head. I mean, commercial real it's like commercial real estate broke into someone's house and they ran into a 12 gauge shotgun and they got 12 loads to the chest. That's what's happening with commercial real estate. And soon that's going to start happening to residential real estate because there's a lagging indicator because many people who are buying houses and stuff, they bought their houses, they went through with their transactions. And as we go through this thing, you're going to see it drop off a cliff. And also with the Fed and all this uh, money in the economy, the banks, because see, this is where the negative interest rates come in. The negative interest rates are to punish the banks for not loaning money. However, banks are in business to make money. And I guarantee you, even with negative interest rates, banks are not going to be putting money into unqualified applicants' hands. And if we get to 50% unemployment, there's going to be many people who will not be structurally sound financially to even get a loan. So all of this money printing, the negative interest rates, it's just not going to work because there's a certain structure to these things and that's the way it's supposed to be. So hopefully I am wrong. Hopefully we do have football season. Hopefully we don't have a second wave of infections, but if we do, and it's, 
can be very likely because of who we are as Americans, because I, I said it, I said it many times, I said it before in the live stream, that we're gonna have the highest infection rate in the world, and here we are. And it's gonna keep going up, and it's gonna become part of this new normal. It's gonna become part of, kinda like the walking dead. They were in a brave new world, where they were out there killing the walkers and the zombies. We're gonna be mask wearing, we're gonna be avoiding each other, people are not gonna to wanna to travel, Hotels are going to suffer. Airbnb is going to collapse. And this is right. This is happening right now. But back to solutions. What you need to do is start you a side business. I understand if you're unemployed. That's why I made 30 days to 2,500 free. And I've already had some positive feedback. And I like someone come in. I listen to you one day one and two. And I've already had three sales. This is what's going to help you weather this sto the storm. Self-sufficiency. I know the government is teasing you with all these proposals. It's the Democrats. It's the Democrats. It's not the Republicans. They're teasing you. And I, I just don't see people getting more free money from the government than the money that they were already making. Because as I've said before, luxuries tasted become necessities. You're already seeing how these low income people are clowning on unemployment. They're like, I ain't going back to work. Work? What's that? Hey, we, we got your job back. Me speak no English. Click. That's just the first sign of what's going to happen. Because if people are put in a position where they can get money for doing absolutely nothing, that's what they will continue to do is absolutely nothing. So I just wanted to have this little chat with y'all today because it was on my mind and understand that people are hurting, understand that people are in harm's way and understand that many people are not prepared for this and you just can't get prepared on the tail end. But what I want you to do is to start focusing on what you can do and stop looking at what you can't do because we're going to, this is going to be a rocky, rocky, rock, rocky, rocky ride. It's going to be very, very rocky. And we're going to have many people who are going to be challenged in ways that you can only minimally understand. We're going to have people who are going to be wickedly challenged. We're going to have situations. And I just wish everyone the best. I hope you stay safe. I hope you stay healthy. I hope no one you know dies from this stuff. But... We as a country are going to have to change our financial habits. In my financial management course, there are businesses that are not set up like that. There are people who have businesses, storefronts, who do not have their books and their money management system set up like that. And right now, it shows. So go ahead, if you're in the position to get the money management course, go ahead and get it. I guarantee you it's going to straighten out your finances and also get 30 days to 2,500 and also get the mindset course because those two, those are tools to make you a stronger independent person. I want you to win. I want you to be able to rock out. I want you because like I said, America was all right. Like I said, America got exposed, but let's build a stronger, better nation. Let's stop believing in false narratives. The stock market only represents 8,000 companies out of a country of 30 million companies. It is not a overall indicator of the overall economy. As you can see, 33 million people unemployed, stock market goes up. It is a small microsystem of companies and even many of those companies on the stock market are not doing that well. Airbnb was set to do their IPO. Disney's taking it on the chin. Tesla's taking it on the chin. Elon Musk is duking it out with California because the factory is closed. He's like, we're going to open it up. These companies are not producing products. They're, I, I guarantee you our GDP is going to be less than it was last year. I want you to think about that. And also <clears throat> join me into making America really great by becoming a creator and a producer. 
I know there are many people, I don't want to stir the business. I don't want to be stressed out. I just want a job so I can go home and chill out. How's that working out for you now? Just because you don't want harm to come to your doorstep doesn't mean that harm will not come to your doorstep. There are many people who had the opportunity to start side hustles, start side businesses, and they were like, I don't want to do that. How's that working out for you now? Hopefully, as an indicated by the savings rate, that people are starting to make fundamental changes in the way that they do stuff. They're starting to wake up. They're starting to get it together. They're starting to understand the burglar is in the house and they don't have a shotgun. They're starting to understand that this stuff is starting to penetrate because, you know, reading the comments of all the stimulus check videos, I see people pushing back on these YouTubers. I still see, and you know, thankfully to this lady who's a nurse, it's like, you know, you, you help me because I have a job, I'm good, but I still wanted that $2,000 a month. The appeal of getting money, and look, you know, I'm gonna do a, a whole video on this, why it's so hard to make money in Forex and stock trading. There are some people who are fundamentally found fantastically successful doing it, but the average person fails, and I'm gonna explain why. So join me in becoming a producer, a creator. Once again, go ahead, get 30 days to 2,500. Go ahead and get the money management course. And I know that I am, <clears throat> I'm pushing the boulder uphill because people just like, I don't want to manage my money properly, Glendon. I want to keep spending recklessly. I want to keep getting car notes on cars I cannot afford. I keep wanting to run up credit card debt. I keep wanting to live this American credit indoctrination system because that's all I know. That's all I was taught. That's all, that's, that's what my mom and dad did. And my mom and dad before, well, actually not, maybe your mom and dad did it, but not your mom and dad, not your grandparents. They didn't live like that. And not your great grandparents. They didn't live like that. This is relatively new. So hopefully we can go back to being a more practical nation and we can go back to doing the things that we need to do to put us in a better situation. All right, so that's all I got for you folks today. Hopefully you're well, happy, and hopefully no one you know has died and no one you know is sick. That's just very, very bad. That's very, very sad. So hopefully this message has penetrated and hopefully you will set yourself up for success in the future.